And now here are the examples. Your credit card information, you know, your face authentication data, the thumbprint, this, that, all of that, you would want it on the secure side, right? And why we'll study that also in a moment. And, you know, normal stuff, normal application data, that is good to have here, no problem, right? Okay, so four execution levels, zero is less functionality, three is max. Then there is a concept of secure and non-secure. We talked about, uh, you know, the non-secure EL, uh, sorry, secure EL2, that doesn't exist. If you cannot operate there, there is a secure world and EL0, EL1 secure. And EL3 is always, always, always secure. So if you're in EL3 mode, if your CPU is operating in EL3, then it is also operating in secure mode. The privileges are high and so is the execution level, right? All right, now let's talk about real life scenarios, right? So your application, for example, an app like Chrome, WhatsApp, well, maybe not WhatsApp, but um, Chrome, chat application, maybe even parts of WhatsApp. Um, and, you know, I'm shying away from WhatsApp because I don't exactly know, you know, which region it works on. But apps like Chrome, for example, YouTube, all of them run in the EL0. And obviously, they're running on top of an operating system, either Linux, Mac OS, or they're running on top of Android. So the Android, uh, you know, Linux, those things run in EL1, right? And as you can imagine, the stuff running in EL1 can multiplex stuff running in EL0, meaning Linux can run a lot many apps. It can switch between different apps and give you that illusion of, you know, running many apps together Mac OS can run many apps. Android can run many apps simultaneously. So EL1 controls EL0, you know, more privileges. You don't want an application like Chrome to be able to reach out to, let's say, the status register of the CPU. You don't want the Chrome to be able to manipulate or change the operation mode of your CPU. You don't want it to configure the CPU. So EL0, less access, less freedom, less hardware access activated you can only do let's say computation here but no manipulation of co configuration registers now as we go down in el1 little more control is possible so the android or the linux kernel can read status registers you know it can maybe configure the system to some degree system meaning the cpu here and then underneath this there is something called hypervisor right and hypervisor is a piece of like you can run a piece of software in EL2 mode that can multiplex between different operating systems. So you, in cloud, if you know, you can run on the same CPU two Linux machines, right? And each of them is running like multiple apps, right? So the hypervisor essentially is switching or sharing that hardware with multiple operating systems. And this typically is used in kind of the cloud um, kind of scenario. If you have heard of the term virtualizer or virtual box, um, you know, those kind of softwares run, can be made to run here. Not that they run, but they can be made to run here, the hypervisor. So folks like Amazon, Microsoft, in their, the cloud providers, what they do is they take one machine, have like the ARM CPUs there, and on the same CPU, they can run two Linux machines and you know give it to different uh, customers. So the hypervisor is doing all of that. The hypervisor then has more control on the operating, uh, not operating system, but more control on the CPU, more configurations can be made, uh, more system state can be manipulated. And then above all of this is the EL3. And the EL3 is the kind of stuff um, that has functionality like, okay, power of the CPU. You know, okay, power of some other subsystem. So those kind of functionalities sit here. Now again, imagine that your one of the Linux systems here says talks to the hypervisor and say, hey, you know, I want to shut down. But you know, the other Linux image is running, so you can't just shut down the the CPU. So the hypervisor then talks to the EL3 here. We call that EL3 resident secure software. Uh, so it talks to the EL3 and the EL3 says, okay, okay, I, I, you know, took a note 
but cannot shut down the CPU because as you know, you know, Linux, another Linux image is running. So those kind of, you know, manipulations, CPU power states and so on and so forth, they are controlled by EL3. So this then uh, is like the hierarchy, right? 